Hello, my name is Fiona Bell. And I'm Netta Ofer. And we are members of the Living Matter Lab at the Atlas Institute at the University of Colorado Boulder. In our lab, we work with biomaterials. These are materials that are derived from natural sources or that are still living. So one of the biomaterials that we develop is called alginyl, which is an algae-based bioplastic that we use to create a bunch of different interactions for the HCI community. We embed it with UV sensing pigments. We embed it with temperature sensing pigments. And we fabricate it using laser cutting and engraving, plating, origami, and most uniquely, we use heat sealing to uh, combine it into large pieces, which we uh, take advantage of to create larger artifacts like clothing. One of the most interesting things about alginyl is the fact that it is completely biodegradable. So here is a sample that we had buried in soil and then removed it, but if we left it in soil, it would be completely biodegraded in about 60 days. And this led us to think about the process of degrading and what it means to degrade biomaterials. And we use that as motivation to create Reclaim, which is a biodegradable clay made from our composted food waste. Similarly to alginyl, we fabricate with Reclaim in various different ways. We add textures, we mold it, we add, you know, sensing pigments and we add color. And we use these ways of fabrication to create, you know, playful interactions such as Carcassonne tiles. We also have these fun artifacts that can be placed around the garden or in the home that are completely biodegradable, but more than anything, they reflect ourselves. Because we're using food waste as this origin material, you know, we're reflecting aspects about our eating habits and, you know, how those change over time and similarly how the material changes over time. So these are both non-living materials that we developed in our lab, but we also work with living materials. For example, kombucha SCOBY, which actually stands for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Uh, kombucha is a popular tea, but when you leave it out for long enough and you feed it, it grows this biofilm at the surface where it has contact with air. And it has this, when it's living, it has this fleshy material quality. But when it's left out to dry, it becomes this paper or even leather-like material, depending on how thick the original SCOBY was. I think what's interesting about this material is that we form a relationship with it. We feed it every week and it's kind of needy in that way. We check on it to see if it needs more nutrients. We check if it needs more heat to grow the layer that we want it to grow. And there's this back and forth motion between us, the designers, and the living organism. Another living organism that we work with is spirulina green algae. Spirulina is very nutrient dense, so you're probably familiar with it as a uh, health supplement that you see in grocery stores. It comes as a powder, but we use it in its living state to create these um, living drawings. So one of the things we did with it is create this pen in which we can draw with the live spirulina. And so 
here the spirulina is wet and alive, but as the drying dies, the spirulina dries out and eventually dies, making us, you know, consider what it means to live and, and you know, the process of killing a material for our needs. So a big part of our work with biomaterials is thinking about the materials we work with and our actual design process. It turns out as a very intimate one with these microscopic, non-human collaborators that really affect and shape our practice. So thank you all for taking this deep dive into biomaterials with us. We want to give a huge shout out to the Living Matter Lab and especially the director of our lab, Dr. Morella Alistar.